Okay, so and we're gonna start uh, today uh, the, uh, the plenary session six and make it simple. This is a case-based learning uh, the experience and uh, I'm gonna introduce the co-moderator uh, Dr. Nasu and uh, we also invited uh, and the world-renowned uh, the fanner and the uh, first the two cases we'll introduce uh, uh, Professor Kenya Nasu. Hey, good, good afternoon, everyone. So the, I introduced the first speaker. Is a, he is a, one of the, my old friends, is Chang Nam. So his title is a 001 bifurcation PCI. Is, is, is simple enough? So Chang, please. Yeah, thank you, respectable chairman. It's my great honor to have a chance to share my experience. Actually, I didn't know that this is a case session. So <laughs> unfortunately, I have only included one case. <laughs> Anyway, this is my disclosure. So today's my talk is about the 001 bifurcation reason. It's a very rare situation. So it is one of the challenging bifurcation reason PCI because there is no, we don't have not enough data and also there is no standard treatment strategy for bifurcation 001 reason. So to solve, uh, the, make us some kind of standard treatment strategy, we have to answer these five questions. So, to get the, this five answer, I uh, gather many uh, registry data and then serve some, I, I will show you the, today's, uh, our data. The first question is how, much, uh, how many 001 regions are here in our daily practice? So, I uh, include, uh, we include uh, three big bifurcation registry from COVID-2 and three and RAIN registry from Italian group. So we uh, merged about 8,434 patients with bifurcation PCI. And see the Medina classification, and the body pound was uh, 001 was 4.1%. So it may be very rare situation in our daily bifurcation PCI. Second question is uh, 001 bifurcation reason behavior. Is it benign or malignant? Because Previous our data from the COVID-2 data, when compared the clinical outcome, true bifurcation region and non-true bifurcation region, we clearly see that true bifurcation region showed the very poor prognosis about the MACE and the cardiac death and MI. So also in this extended bifurcate registry, we can differentiate the Medina crest and then divide as a true bifurcation region and the non-true bifurcation region. So true bifurcation region showed the three-year MACE rate around 12 or 13 percent. And the non-true bifurcation, it looks less than 10 percent. So same as a previous COVID-2 data. But how about the 001 bifurcation region? It's amazingly, 001 bifurcation MACE rate was the highest, the worst uh, scenario. So anatomically, we classify as 001 is non-true bifurcation. But behavior is more harmful as a true bifurcation reason. So the question is, what are the unique features of a 001 bifurcation reason? Previous Arsenal Medical Center showed that the uh, side branch osteum has a negative remodeling. So negative remodeling, it easily can be recoiled and then we can get a lesser acute gain. The second issue is the uh, risk of injury to main vessel during the treatment of a side branch. So it, dissection can extend to main vessel. It can be digester. Third one is a side branch has a uh, usually lesser, uh, smaller uh, vessel diameter. So we can uh, input the smaller size stent. So we easily know that the restenosis rate will be higher than that. And finally, the angiographic 001 bifurcation is not always true bifurcation 001. So I will show this case. Angiographically, it's a 001 bifurcation reason. But if you see the IVUS in this patient from CERC and RAD, definitely there is a tight stenosis in circumflex osteum. But the RAD proximal moderate carspite plaque was detected, and amazingly, this are left main showed them looks, angiocally looks good, but heavily carcified moderate to severe plaque was detected by IVUS. So angiographically, we can differentiate it as a 001 bifurcation, but IVUS, we may 
uh, we may have to say at least 101 bifurcation reason or one, one, one by IBUS. And first question is uh, what are the treatment strategy options for the 001 bifurcation reason? Most of our current reason, we have three options, right? First one is uh, medical therapy alone, and second is balloon angioplasty. Previously, balloon angioplasty was uh, uh, negative uh, compared to stent procedure, but we, nowadays we have DCB, so 001 reason can be theoretically a yeah, good candidate for DCB treatment and then strength strategy. Medical therapy is not a focus on today's talk, but I have to emphasize because even though it's 4.1% in our bifurcation registry data, but the year 001 instance may be higher than that because our registry includes only treatment, uh, uh, stent uh, deployable bifurcation reason. So usually small 001 bifurcation reason can be treated with a medical therapy only because the myocardial burden is very small. Second thing is a uh, uh, DCB treatment. DCB treatment, there is a two, uh, two different uh, strategies. One is a strong benefit with DCB for 0 bifurcation is because we can reduce metal burden and preserve negative, uh, 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 native uh, coronary bifurcation anatomy and reduction of uh, uh, risk of thrombosis and the uh, duration of death. However, there is also weak point because the risk of uh, elastic recoil of side branch osteum because negative remodeling and the risk of uh, coronary dissection to main vessel and the lack of uh, clinical data. And finally, uh, last question is uh, when we apply the stent in poor bifurcation, 001 bifurcation region, which is better, one stent strategy or two stent strategy? When you see the 15 years data, pre Early stage, we do apply the two stand strategy because we can complete revascularization with the two stand strategy. However, uh, recently we prepared the provisional approach. And uh, when you compare the one stand strategy and two stand strategy, definitely two stand strategy has a higher chance of main bifurcation reason. And also, uh, when you do apply two stand strategy, crushing is the most uh, common strategy, and then tear stenting and cure was observed. And instance of a kissing balloon, definitely two stand strategy is higher, and pot tackling was common in one stand strategy. In the QCA data, even though it's very uh, small or cohort, but uh, when you see the one stand strategy compared to user uh, side branch there is a little bit larger side branch in one stand strategy because we have to cross over from the side branch to main vessel. And the diameter stenosis, even though it's a, a, a 001 reason, but the main vessel has a, some kind of plaque, 40% of plaque in two stand strategy. And what about the, the primary end point, the SMI, TVR, and stand thrombosis, compared to one stand strategy, to strength strategies, there is no difference until three years. When you divide it as a one stress strategy only, it's just crossover without side branch opening, or one stress strategy with start opening, and two stress strategies, still there is no difference in three uh, different strategies. So we can apply any kind of strategy, one or two stent or side branch opening, but uh, what you concern is uh, it's very poor prognosis. And we analyzed again about the circular analysis as AZ, diabetes, and the main bifurcation or non left main bifurcation, and anything was no different result. So, uh, this case, as I already mentioned, there is a, this is a left main disease, so I have to cross over stent. And this is the result. Because uh, left main disease are part as a moderate calcified plaque if after pot plaque was moved to the ostia of a RAD. And your capillary is quite acceptable, but when you measured the FFR, FFR was low. So I applied the kissing balloon, NC balloon, but unfortunately because there is a calcified plaque, there was calcified plaque, so I have to apply additional stent. That's why it looks like very simple reason, but sometimes we have to apply two stand strategy for this kind of 001 bifurcation reason. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, is, this is my summary slide. The instance of angiographic 001 bifurcation region was rare in clinical scenario. In recent years, there has been a tendency to prepare one stance strategy, so we approach provisionally. Although there was no imaging data, angiographic 001 bifurcation region is not always real 001 region, so additional intracoronary evaluation will be beneficial. Clinical outcome after PCI appears unfavorable. Therefore, we have to take a higher risk than our thought. So it is imperative to consider a variety of a treatment modality when deciding on the most appropriate approach for each 001 bifurcation reason. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Chalma. So the, we have uh, the five minutes uh, discussion time. So uh, do you have any comment from the panel? Yeah, it's very interesting topic. So always frustrating <laughs> to encounter this kinds of situation. So, but I think uh, I'm not sure uh, this is a one stand crossover technique in this situation is the uh, best or not. In my case, I usually do not because of LAD is more important than circumplex. So I think it is better to yeah, uh, mention uh, for the uh, important point when to the procedure, yeah, yeah, to the crossover technique, especially the circumplex to, to left main. Any, any other some tip or comment to improve these kinds of some yeah, yeah, critical outcome? As you, as you know that uh, I prefer the, the, when you treat uh, the LAD region, we prefer the, just a simple crossover from the LAD to circ, and then we know that uh, even though we did not often the circumplex osteum, so our clinical data showed that there was no different clinical outcome difference. Uh, but we are very uncomfortable when it's just a simple crossover from the circ to left to main. And then we are concerned because uh, LAD has a large micro burden than the circumflex. But we have to remember that circumflex also big artery. Most of, uh, nearly more than 90% showed uh, more than 10% micro burden. So I think theoretically it, it is not so different. But we have to confirm that uh, our, when you just a simple crossover standing, we have to confirm that uh, the opposite side is quite, result is quite satisfied with imaging or physiology. So uh, if we do not often the uh, other uh, 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 contralateral part of a vessel opening strut, we cannot measure the imaging. So in that case, I prefer the physiology guidance. Anyway, you can open. Even though often, no difference. So if you feel uncomfortable, you can often with the kissing balloon technique and then we can confirm the imaging. Okay, thank you very much. So the time is limited, so we move to the next, uh, sorry. So we move to the next speaker. Thank you very much, Dr. Chao Nam. So next speaker, the Dr. Ahmed Haozi uh, Yaya is his title, the pitfall in left main PCI, how to avoid the, how to treat the consequence. Uh, thank you very much for having me here. I'm going to talk regarding the pitfalls of the left mid BCI. Nothing to disclose. So uh, we are uh, having continuing debate. Uh, what, which is the better strategy in left mid bifurcation, whether, whether to stand or provisional standing? And uh, we don't know uh, uh, until now when it is, uh, the debate is going to end. But the matter is how to avoid the pitfalls and achieve optimal goals is a matter. This gentleman uh, which uh, disease uh, bifurcation lesion, look at the very deviously disease of the LED and circumflex, but how the operator did it, he performed to uh, a GK crush technique, but unfortunately, you can see there is a longitudinal stand deformation during DK crash when already finished, but this is a shortening of left main uh, stenting. So uh, what is the mechanism 
because of we not cautious in movement, manipulating guiding catheter. Somewhat uh, forward movement of guiding catheter after pulling back of partial deflated balloon, IFOS or city or jail is uh, the mechanism of these uh, longitudinal stand deformations. So how to fix it? Correction by POT and uh, if needed is uh, need uh, additional stenting. How to avoid? Wait for full balloon deflation before retrieve the stand balloon. Awareness of guiding catheter interaction on device with travel and retrograde traction of guiding catheter to mini minimize the risk of deformations. Uh, this study demonstrated that three years left mean related major adverse uh, cardiac event is worse uh, when there is a uh, stand deformations. This is another uh, case. Uh, as you see, there is a very uh, high calcivit uh, of LAD, and there is a diffuse uh, disease and the disease at the circumflex. Uh, we did rotabilization, burst size 175, uh, and reduced the speed to 130 key to have uh, ablate more. You can see here there is a, a calcific calcification of osteal LAD, but uh, relatively good at the uh, orsium circumflex. This is the osteal part. And then this is, uh, we did a TAP, uh, circumflex left main, we're using a 4030 uh, millimeter and a lady left main, DS3530. Uh, but you can see here, this, this is the uh, LAD uh, from the left main, which is, uh, I think, quite, up, quite uh, looks good. But when we, you are seeing this uh, kind of the, circumflex in the TEP, the osteal part. So you can see here, ah, this is a non-optimal osteal uh, uh, circumflex stand. So the, uh, although we, so, uh, we see there is a very uh, good uh, in angiographically, but uh, under uh, intracoronary imaging is going to reveal what exactly the osteal part of the, both of the branches. And we did a sequential balloon dilatation and repeat kissing balloon uh, dilatation with simultaneous deflation. It is important to perform simultaneous uh, simultan deflations. So when we report, we uh, put the balloon far away from the carina because if you are uh, doing the uh, part and uh, close to the carina is going to impact and defeat uh, the carina. And this is the, uh, the result. It's, uh, quite uh, good uh, to have uh, such a calcified lesion in the osteal LED, and there is a left mean is uh, very nicely in the circumflex, circumflex of uh, left mean, uh, osteal circumflex. This is successful to AAP technique. Uh, you can see here, there's long axis, very uh, metal, uh, small, uh, short metal carina here in the uh, carina, so deviation is uh, at, the, at the part at the uh, mid of the uh, carina. This is a third part, there is a calcified lesions, uh, a disease of the left main. What we are doing at the time, the, we put a D, uh, DES because this is a very diffusely disease, we don't know exactly when to land and we use a DCB at the par, distal part. But what happened is it both guiding wire and LED circumflex were unintentionally pulled out. There is a TO, you can uh, imagine TO in the left main. So, uh, but uh, after wiring, we throw the wire goes to intra stenting, and then we put a POT, uh, but you can watch there is a st uh, stand deformation at the proximal stand of segment. You can see the illustrative cartoon. So what uh, we do, uh, we did an uh, IFO study and uh, there is a false entry point of osteal wiring, a luminal side. This is an illustrative cartoon, false uh, wire, uh, wiring length. We uh, measure there is a 4.2 millimeter. So we uh, try to fix it, but uh, we cannot uh, wiring the osteal part. So we balloon crash at the proximal segment and then crush proximal, uh, this is the, this is the crush uh, proximal segment stand. 
and then standing at the ocean part uh, using 4 uh, millimeters, 9 millimeter balloon, and, and then end up the ocean flaring. This is triple layer, very good. Uh, you can uh, see here, appreciate from the IFUS finding. Final result is and geographically very good, and then we are you're doing uh, IFUS as well. And this is one year follow up still. Uh, stand or, or pattern. This is the fourth case. This is a div, uh, calcified disease uh, of this is an eruptive calcium nodule. You can see here that the left main patient with ST elevation, acute MI. And then we decided to use a burr to perform burr 175 to uh, L6, uh, circumflex root. And then uh, after uh, uh, further preparation, uh, final shot, uh, we perform a decay crash. And you can see here, very good result. But what happened actually? Proximal circumflex was, uh, you can see here, at the osteal circumflex, no stand strut. So what's wrong? What's happened? This is the stand, the circumflex uh, from decay crash. But there is no strut here. This is a distal abluminary wiring. During we wire, we, the wire goes to the distal part. So kissing balloon inflation may lead to strut to the proximal circumflex being pushed toward the lateral set branch. But luckily, after uh, seven uh, months later, uh, we still have a set, stand is set uh, uh, pattern. Uh, this already four years patient is uh, doing well. How to avoid abluminal wiring? This uh, first deep engage of guiding catheter, knuckle wire, pull and redirect distal uh, main vessel wire, and use a, a dual lumen micro catheter to guide rewiring to the side branch. Intracoronary imaging is the gold standard in cognition of abluminal rewiring. So this is the uh, last case of so chasing uh, optimal side branch. You can see here, there is a uh, bifurcation of left main. So we do a port and PUT, uh, trying to find out after we perform uh, left main crossover stenting from the LED uh, left main. We uh, did a POT, and then we trying to recross uh, wiring. But a distal cell is not always an optimal cell because if we are doing a prof, uh, professional stenting, we're trying to find out the distal part of the distal cell. But OCT report reveal incomplete gel strut removal, even if the uh, kissing balloon inflation is performed with recrossing point in the distal cell. So kissing balloon inflation can cause severe stent deformation if recrossing point occur in the far distal area. I show you. This is what we had. Uh, there's a line, link connecting type, gut wire recrossing at the proximal part. You can imagine wh where the wire, if the wire goes to here. So we think that the wire is the, uh, should go to uh, optimal strut here. So we did uh, kissing balloon inflation. Uh, so uh, after, uh, after confirm that the wire goes to the optimal strut and end up with no minimal gel strut, large side branch orificium area. So the take home message is bifurcation PCI entails multiple steps and can be challenging to perform. Awareness of the potential pitfalls and solution can help to minimize the pain while maintaining the gain. Intracoronary imaging can aid to avoid the pitfall and optimize the procedures. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So the, it's time to the, open the discussion. Is, do you have any comment from the panel? So my simple question is, uh, you know, some during the complex uh, uh, two-stand technique, the abluminal uh, rewiring sometimes is a problematic. Yeah. What, what is the key step to avoid the abluminal rewiring during the, you know, two-stand technique like TK crush or Stenting is what, what is the key step to avoid the 
you know, of luminal rewiring during the complex PCR procedure? Yeah, I, I think we have to use intracoronal aging in every step to confirm whether the wire is uh, on the right track and goes to the right uh, strut, to the optimal strut. So that's the important part. Because based on angiography, quite difficult to, uh, to assess. This is, uh, that's why the October trial, uh, using OCD, they use uh, this kind of uh, uh, assessment, using OCD after rewiring. I have a similar question to you. The, yeah, your first please. case, you did the uh, rotabrasion to from the left main to left circumflex. Yes. There were heavy calcified region in the bifurcation yeah. region. But you also leave the wire from left main to LAD. In such case, there is no chance to destroy the wire damage to the of the LAD wire. No, no, so we don't. We don't put the the wire goes to the LAD. We just use a. Uh, the the wire goes to, uh, yeah you you yeah. leaving the wire from the left main to no, uh, at that time we if, if we are uh, using the uh, rotablation we are uh, trying to uh, cross over the, the the wire yeah anyway it is very dangerous to leave the yeah. left main to the wire For your example, the problem occurred from two stent technique, right? And yeah. You have experience when you just do provisional stent, and the problem occur. Uh, which one? Okay, but because of your example yeah. from two stent technique. Yeah. Uh, do you have example from just one stent technique to have the problem from bifurcation stent? For uh, example. Sorry, I got. I got. Uh, yeah, okay. please. Uh, for your example. All of your example is two stent technique, right? Okay. Okay. And do you have, for example, from one stent technique or provisional stent? Yeah. Occur. Yeah. This is the the second, uh, the third uh, case is a, a provisional stenting yeah. actually. Uh, the wire goes to the abluminal uh, uh, side, but we cross it using the balloon because we don't. Uh, at the time we are using OCT. And then uh, we cannot uh, know there is uh, uh, when already come when already crush the the balloon. We cannot assess the osseal part. That's why we are changed to use our IFOS to assess the osseal part of uh, crushed uh, left main standing. Okay, thank you very much. So we move to the next speaker. So okay. to introduce uh, Dr. Liu Park. Okay, thank you, Dr. Yaya. And so we're gonna move to the another the interesting topic, PCI and coronary access post tower and uh, Dr. Jonathan Fang. Thank you for the kind invitation, Professor Park. It's truly my honor to be here. My topic is uh, PCI coronary access post tarvi I have nothing to declare. So imagine that you are young attending on your first case uh, with a post tarvi patient comes in with inferior stamina. You are on your fifth guide and you are unable to engage this. What do you do? Do you call on your senior partner for help? Do you call the CD surgeon for cabbage, or do you call the patient's relative about the challenge? This is a very real situation. In the, our target population, if we follow the trials, roughly 50%, half of them, we have coronary artery disease. And um, in five years, 16% of them will require coronary access. In fact, two to 10% of them will present as ACS somewhere yeah, two years down the road, and they have worse survival compared to patients without a valve, 40% mortality in two years. Data from randomized control trial, the activation trial, tell us that preemptively treating these lesions does not improve outcome. And from the, uh, the reverse TAVI registry, we know that sometimes the outcome is better if we do the PCR afterwards. And this together with the low risk of evolute and the partner trials means that we will be seeing these patients more and more. So this is a real challenge. So the reality is that you can't always engage the coronary. Sometimes you have a selective engagement, sometimes you have a semi-selective engagement and the tip side of it, and sometimes it's purely impossible to do it. So back to this case. 
So what do we do? We actually switch to femoral access. So your familiar access is the radio access, but I would argue that in this situation, it's actually better to go left radio because you have more freedom for to steer your guide around the side of the valve, which sometimes you need to engage. And of course, the femoral is always the best in terms of maneuverability of the cavity. So try not to go right radio in this situation. That's the first tip. So here we, we switched to our fifth guide back to the JR4, use a microcatheter in, use a hydrophilic wire, cross the lesion, and then swap back to a workhorse. At some point, the patient required right height calf. He was uh, hemodynamically crashing, so we put in the impeller. We were able to complete the case, balloon and stent, and get the patient off the table. So second, so sometimes we don't know the anatomy. We didn't put in the valve. So it's always good to do an aortogram to know the take off the, the coronary, the location. Don't be ashamed of doing an aortogram. Sometimes you actually save contrast. This, we know that uh, it's a uh, down facing in case, in fact, the RCA is CTO here. So third is know your valve. So different valves have different designs. Some are open cells, some are closed cells. Some you are able to get in easily. Some will pose a very a tough challenge. Some are superannular, some are annular. You need to know the skirt height of the valve because if it's below the skirt height, your catheter won't be able to go in. So you need to find a sweet spot, which is the, the best way to engage the valve in a coaxial manner. And different valve size, different valve design, in fact, even different valve uh, volume deployment that leads to different foreshortening will affect this. So this is seminal work done by Mount Sinai, um, sinal tubular junction, the implantation height, the sinus of Valsalva width, these are all uh, crucial factors. Commercial alignment is also so an important factor. For those who are familiar with CT, um, you, you are in a, a lot, CT can help you a lot actually. So we need to choose the right guide. Most of the challenge in coronary access comes with the Evolute valve. So this is from Medtronic. They, they suggest that go with the guide that can provide perpendicular crossing and coaxial approach to your ostium in the middle. And if you are not able to get it, move a strut higher and try again. Sometimes if the valve is not aligned, the pose in front, try to go from the side. And if you do that, you will need a longer guide. For, safe, for this, you need to downside by 0.5 because the back of your guide will be sitting inside the valve. The anatomy is altered. But if it's a sapien, actually you don't need to downside because your back wall is the true aorta. This is a very elegant algorithm done by the same group in Mount Sinai. I do not have time to go over this entire algorithm, but they classify them according to valve, whether you have commercial alignment. Usually the first guide is a JR4, FL3.5, or FL3 but the Ikari guide is also a popular one here. The AR2 is also one. And common to all algorithms, it's a very low threshold to use the guide extension. So these, if you have a very narrow sinus to the valve, these are the cavities that you like, the Judkins, the 3D RCA, uh, and LCB. But if you have a wide sinus, you think about these MPLATs, multipurpose, and Ikari. Uh, if you have a wide, you have a horizontal route, or if you would need to navigate the commissure, these are the, your selection of guide. So fifth, low threshold to use guide extension. This apps show you here there's a post in front of the coronary, so you can try to navigate through it, use the 035 wire, put your cavity here, and then use a coronary to wire it. And then put a balloon in to anchor a micro uh, a guide extension, and then you have good support. So a lot of cases will require a guide extension, and that should be a standard equipment you use to do PCI in these patients. So case two, this we don't have coaxial uh, engagement of the guide. So we went in, we railed a micro uh, guide extension to a guide liner with a balloon. We were able to perform BCI, deliver the stance 3540, and uh, this is what's re our result. So six, commercial alignment is very important. In this uh, seminal work done by Giuseppe Tartarini, so Sabine usually doesn't pose a challenge, but if you have a tall valve frame, if you don't have commercial alignment, 
only 46% of the time you get a selective engagement. 43% you don't get a selective engagement. Only semi-selective and 11% you won't be able to get in. That's why as implanters, we are striving to achieve commercial alignment. And you can tell from the angiogram whether you have commercial alignment by trying, trying to uh, identify the CTAP of the Evolute valve. You go 20 degrees LAO and identify this uh, if it's almost on the on the right side of the screen, this means you will have you have good commercial alignment and you should have no trouble. So this is a case where we had to do a left main bifurcation stent. So because we had here we have good commercial alignment from the CTAP, because of this we were able to put the eight French guide with very good support, perform a completion DK culotte uh, of the case and. Uh, get a good result. So it's not only the PCI, but also the implantation of the valve that matters. This is a Sapien valve. This is a chip case, CTO dual segment. So we were able to do rotor ablation, 175 burr, and then reconstruct the whole RCA from PLV branch back to the ostium with five stents. So Sapien usually is uh, less challenging. So seventh, Sometimes you don't get an engagement, what to do? Do you give up the PCI? And the answer is actually no. Even if your guide can't get in, you can what we call AML or fish a wire in. In fact, you should do two. One of this wire is in the circumflex, one is in the LAD, and our lesion is in the circumflex. Not only is this wire, we use a hydrophilic wire like a Pilot 50. And this is our guide, it's a JR4, it's sitting here at the back wall. This is the guideliner. The guideliner itself can't go in. And you can see this white line here, which is a leaflet pinned to the side, which is in our way. So our guide is actually going from around it. And we were able to push and pull, create a well, track our balloon in, and perform the PCI in the circumflex. In the same case, we also entered the valve, the stand uh, the SVG graph on the side of the valve with rotor ablation and then uh, scoring balloon, lithotripsy and laser and then put a stand in Megatron stand. So uh, I probably don't have time but valve and valve is the new frontier in this field. Um, some work done by Oli Becker uh, says that you look at the density, you look whether your coronary is above the new skirt which you can't get in and also the distance from the aorta to the valve, uh, whether it's three millimeter, this is very important. This is just out two days ago by Gilbert Tang, uh, looking at the distance from the net pin leaflet length, which I don't have time to get. The gist is, if you have a wide sinus, you can able to slip the cavity from above in, even if you can't get in from um, coaxially because of the density of the frame. And, uh, Contribution by um, Dr. Arif Kuka from um, Imperial College London. He, he suggests using an AL6 uh, from the inner curvature of the aorta, and for the RCA from the outer curvature of the aorta, use an IM catheter. So finally, after a PCI disengage, don't disengage normally by pulling the wire. Actually walk the catheter out, leave the wire in, because if you just pull, this will happen. <laughs> you can trap the catheter in, you can't get it out, and that just can be disastrous. So this is an algorithm which I think I've already gone through. So my summary side is uh, uh, more and more common. We see these cases um, challenging us. With, we need the PCI. These are the steps that might be able to increase your success with good planning, correct tools, uh, and also good implantation technique. Hopefully we can get more PCI uh, done easier. And also, I'm not an imaging, but CT is definitely your friend. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your lecture. So, uh, any, any comment or question? Yeah, I do have a question. Yeah, great talk, Dr. Fang. Um, just want to ask, <clears throat> if increasing tower performed and patients are um, aging uh, and presents with STEMI, I mean, th that's really a nightmare. So, I mean, do you, in Henry Ford or in the institution that you work in, is there a protocol post-tower uh, where you store the floral of 
re-engaging the coronaries just to, at what view and using what catheter, I mean, just to anticipate in, in future, like if the patient presents with STEMI, uh, how the engagement view is going to be like and, and how, the cor uh, how the guide engages it. Yeah. As far as I know, we don't do that. But if you are initially implanting an evolute, you can look at the S-curve, like the cusp overlap view, that can actually give you an idea of what the coronary take off is. Um, uh, migration of uh, trans catheter heart valve uh, when during PCI post tower uh, could be a major catastrophic event. Uh, have you ever experienced or when is the optimal timing for staged PCI post tower to avoid uh, heart valve migration? I think some anecdotal, uh, I mean, we have the registry data of the European uh, reverse TAVI data suggesting. It's after PCI better result, but it also depends on your location and the severity. If you have a very severe osteo left main bifurcation lesion, it wouldn't be unreasonable to fix it up front before you put the valve in. Okay. So just a just a quick question. You already mentioned of the role of CT. So in, in case uh, without some uh, emergent situation, so I think that do you usually recommend to perform the CT to plan the, the PCI? If we have the luxury of the CT, that would be great. But in emergency situations, I think we just need more help in the cath labs. And I wouldn't, regardless of the near or the house in the area, I think it's always best to call for help if one person is not enough. So, and my last question, so the, how many cases you experience, you know, you, uh, you are usually planned to the, you know, risk of coronary obstruction during the TAVA procedure, but sometimes, unfortunately, uh, unexpected coronary obstruction happen. Is that, how many cases do you experience after uh, TAVA implantation, you don't, do not any engagement, it's a failed, it's any engagement and go to the, you know, the bypass surgery immediately. Do you, do you uh, experience? Fortunately, I haven't encountered that yet because my center have very low threshold of going leaflet modification with basilica or a chimney stand protection and we also have very good imager. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you, your very nice lecture. So we're gonna move to the, uh, another interesting the topic is my experience dealing with the coronary perforation microcast digital perfusion technique in the uh, my friend Ishara. Okay, go ahead. Uh, thank you for chairman, Dr. Park. Uh, also my best friend, thank you so much. Uh, so uh, it's my great honor to share my uh, so this technique for worldwide expert doctors. So uh, as you know, coronary perforation is not uh, common but life-threatening sometimes of uh, uh, complication and frequency is less than 1%. But we cannot experience so many population cases so that we should learn from others and also prepare just in case. Uh, so I will show uh, not serious population, but so we sometimes face this kind of case. So this is a circumflex CTO. Uh, we can see the CTO. And also, fortunately, uh, XR is not uh, passed, but uh, Gaia, Gaia second wire uh, passed the CTO lesion. And after that, uh, uh, just after so fixing the uh, LED using anchor technique, and also so we put the uh, DS uh, to the circumflex. Lesion. And after that, so put the stent to the LAD lesion. Uh, is this a final angio? But uh, this part is not so clear, so because uh, uh, relatively shrink and so uh, spasm, so that uh, we give the vasodilator and also small balloon dilation. And after that, we can see the coronary perforation out here. Uh, maybe this. Uh, might be uh, done by Gaia, so uh, my, my wire manipulation is not enough uh, good, so that uh, in this kind of situation, uh, as you know, we do the long time barring inflation, uh, this time 10 minutes, but still bleeding, so that I did uh, LCT control, so uh, half reverse of the heparin, and also more longer barring inflation. 
because this is a circumflex effect, so that uh, patient condition is stable, and also this uh, uh, region is CTO, so that we can do long time balloon inflation. And fortunately, uh, I can fix the uh, coronary perforation. So, in this kind of small perforation, it's okay. Uh, we can do long time barrel inflation. And in Japan, we can use perfusion barrel. In some countries, okay, but in many countries of in Asia, uh, it's not available. And sometimes we, we do uh, heparin control and also the, uh, check you, uh, echocardiography and also sometimes uh, synthesis or something. And we, we have the option of PTFE covered stent, uh, like a graft master. And the final option is surgical operation. Uh, but, uh, as you know, long time inflation, uh, if in large vessel, uh, proximal LD or proximal RCA, at that time, it caused serious ischemia. So, chest pain, patient feel chest pain, ST elevation, uh, blood pressure decrease, and fatal arrhythmia sometimes happen. And perfusion balloon is, as I mentioned, it is effective, but maybe most of countries are not available. And the covered stent is, of course, one option, but sometimes difficulty of delivery, and also it has a high risk stenosis rate. So that I will uh, share my uh, so, uh, this technique. So this is uh, not brand new technique, so maybe some doctors know, but uh, this is still useful. So uh, the patient is 73 years old female, and uh, this is angiography six months after AMI. And uh, unfortunately, LAD lesion, mid LAD lesion was progressed so that we uh, decided to perform PCI for LAD. Uh, so, uh, we put the uh, drug editing stand uh, to the mid LED region. And a uh, little, little bit so uh, indentation uh, existing so that we perform the uh, post dilation uh, 2.75 millimeter balloon and up to 2.424 atmosphere. Uh, it's too much. So, uh, fortunate, uh, this time indentation disappeared, but after dilation. Uh, severe coronary perforation occurred, like this. So, I'm so surprised what I can do. But, so, uh, we should do the long time balloon inflation, but this is a big LED, so that maybe ischemia happens. So, uh, in this situation, I uh, and decided to uh, perfuse with patient blood. So, first of all, so, uh, this is a, uh, we can, I will uh, explain, this is a balloon and uh, this is a perforation site. So, and uh, this is also the microcatheter tip. So, uh, besides the balloon, uh, I advance the microcatheter uh, in this part and also uh, inflate the balloon again to uh, occlude uh, the perforation site. And uh, we can inject the patient arterial blood. Uh, it is taken from uh, other part uh, of the uh, puncture site, for example, femoral or radial or something. So, uh, I will show, uh, explain later. So, uh, this is a uh, ECG during occlusion. Left side is uh, just occlusion, and right side is so uh, the, um, uh, perfusion from microcatheter. So that we can see that still uh, T wave is relatively high, but uh, patient chest pain is disappeared, and we can do more long inflation. Uh, this is very simple way only using microcatheter. Even we can use in six French guiding catheter. So after 20 minutes, uh, balloon occlusion, uh, bleeding stopped. So we didn't use, uh, we didn't have to use a uh, covered stent and no pericardial effusion. So uh, this is a, a exper uh, experiment of the, this technique. So first of all, after uh, perforation, we should uh, immediately open up the balloon to occlude the lesion so that bleeding stop. But this star part is like this ischemia. So that in this point, uh, advance some micro, uh, guide wire and also microcatheter, just proximal side of the balloon. And ju just uh, short time deflation of the balloon catheter and also advance the wire and microcatheter uh, uh, quickly. And balloon occlude again so that we can. Uh, stop bleeding, and also uh, after little, little barrel uh, of guide, guide wire, we can inject the, inject the 
patient arterial uh, blood. Uh, like this is the image. Uh, this is a uh, guiding catheter uh, from femoral. And we can insert a, a additional sheath, mm -hmm. and we can correct the patient arterial bl blood flow like this. And uh, this is a three-way stop cock, and also this is a uh, extension tube. Uh, maybe we can uh, get, uh, uh, we, we sometimes use to for the ki uh, kissing balloon or something. At that time, this kind of extension tube is needed. And uh, this is an image, so we should inject with a small balloon, so from this way to this way. So this is a, uh, a perfusion uh, route, uh, like this. So, uh, so some doctors ask me, is it okay? Is it safe or is it effective? So that uh, there are some questions. Can we get complete occlusion and stop bleeding? Or do the balloon oppress the lumen of microcatheter or something? And self blood flow from other arterial line is enough or not? So do we need so pumping injection or something? And which microcatheter is the best to use? So that we examined. Uh, for example, this side and this side, this is the micro catheter and this is the balloon catheter. If the micro catheter is opposite side or lateral side, no problem. And so, uh, micro catheter is also uh, uh, in at the perforation side. Al almost okay. But <laughs> if, like this situation, micro catheter and the balloon catheter is like this, and so nearly, nearly uh, the perforation side, at that time, still continue bleeding. So that, at that time, what we can do? Just deflate again, and wire and micro catheter pull back and advance again. So we can change the position. We examine again and again. So almost say, uh, one attempt, on, uh, only one attempt, but 70% we can change the uh, micro catheter position. So that a few times is okay. And do the balloon oppress the lumen of micro catheter? No. Uh, yeah, the answer is no. So. Uh, Room, uh, even 20 atmosphere, we don't use 20 atmosphere, but uh, blood flow is still keep. And self blood is okay or not? No, uh, we should inject uh, because micro catheter room is very small, so that we should uh, relatively strong pressure. And which micro catheter is the best to use? I don't know. <laughs> Up to your countries, but in Japan, maybe ordinary catheter, Corsair catheter is relatively uh, so in lumen small, so it's not uh, okay. But uh, for example, pine cross or any other so normal micro catheter is okay, I think. <laughs> and so uh, this is a. Uh, Official data of, in Japan, we can use a uh, perfusion barrel. So perfusion barrel is 20 to 30 milliliter per minute. But our uh, procedure is 20, uh, around 20 milliliter. We using a small syringe. So uh, this is a summary. Micro catheter distal perfusion technique are useful when long inflammation is needed. So it is effective enough to stop bleeding. Uh, but we can consider. If we cannot uh, perfectly uh, stop bleeding, but we can carry out other therapeutic options. For example, double guiding catheter, cupboard using cupboard stent, or cold surgeon, something. So, uh, the, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, my last slide. So, coronary perforation comes suddenly, so that we should learn some better options to stop bleeding. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. <laughs> you are very genius, man. <laughs> so I think many the panelists has a the nice uh, comment or question. Is any any comment or question? Oh yeah, I have. Um, thank you for such ex excellent lecture. And I think I've had several perforations myself, and especially distal left main perforations. Ah, yeah. You know, when patients crash really fast. And you know, you are inflating the balloon and you're occluding both the LAD and the circ. And especially if it's a left dominant system. Yes, yes. And also in RCAs, where if you prolong inflate in RCA, they can't even tolerate more than five minutes because they go bradycardic and hypotensive. So yeah, thank you for that excellent yeah, method. Yes, so I, have, I want to sub mention. So if left domain population occurred, at that time we can, for example, use uh, two micro catheters for LAD and also circumflex. It's also one option, but wow. uh, it needs seven French. Or in Japan, if you, you can use perforation, uh, perfusion balloon from left, left main to LAD, we can use uh, perfusion balloon. And for just circumflex, we put the micro catheter. It's also, we, maybe you can uh, change, uh, arrange this technique. Wow. 
But that would mean like your nurse or somebody, second operator, needs to cons constantly like. Ah, you know? it depends on. Um, of course, you can do, but also you are so colleague can do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ishihara Sensei, uh, with micro catheter, you can uh, inflate balloon for a long time. How long you can wait to change to uh, cover stand? 20 minutes, 30 minutes, or one hour? Uh, so, uh, it's the, uh, of course, so the most important point is to uh, get enough hemostasis. So that, for example, if 10 minutes is okay, it's okay. But uh, in, in my feeling, so maybe uh, long balloon inflation uh, sometimes make for example, thrombus or something. So that we should be careful about uh, not only occlusion, but also hemos uh, so, uh, thrombus or something. I wonder we should use the heparin to the auto transfused blood because you already maybe used the protein sulfate. Uh, it's a high thrombotic. So, uh, so maybe first case I use uh, uh, so uh, so uh, so protamin so to reverse the heparin, but uh, it, it's not uh, it it depends on the situation. So for example, the second case uh, it's not uh, okay because uh, already uh, long stand on and or something. So that maybe heparin uh, reverse is sometimes okay, but sometimes not okay as you know. So uh, sometimes strong soakers and we should flush the guiding catheter. Uh, uh, we need some uh, more. Options. Yeah. Any, just a practical question. After uh, stopping the bleeding, then you always put a stent. So, what is the, your strategy of the durant bleed therapy after ah, yes, this kind yes, of yes. issue? Yeah. I, I think, uh, of course, after putting a stent, we need to continue to do around the plate. But these days, uh, maybe in worldwide studies, uh, only one. Anti platelet is also acceptable so that it depends on the region or uh, length or la size or something. And uh, of course, we should check IVASA. Uh, also, it's also important after operation. So, I think this is the last question. Is, is, I, I'm, I'm very you know, surprising your idea. How, how you get this, uh, you know, propose this, uh, you know, genius idea? Is a, this is, there is no no publication oh. like this, and after operation, we do, you know, cover the stand or embolization and blah, 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 and the distal yes. population technique is uh, some sort of flight of idea. Did you, did you invent this technique or, or did you receive from hint from your senior? Or yeah, uh, I, in this time, just so, because uh, may, mo most of doctors know the long, long time barrier inflation, but, uh, uh, but Maybe uh, the problem is only the ischemia. So that uh, how to uh, so solve the ischemia. So that, oh, maybe um, arterial blood uh, should be uh, go this study. So just 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 that's all. So I have no uh, so teacher or something. Oh. Uh, that's that's true. Do you have experience? <laughs> ah yes, actually that this is very common in Japan. Oh. So now, but I had uh, one comment of the first case is the bayer perforation. Why don't why didn't you Put the so the coil or the, yes. so even though if you don't want to put the coil, you had better to the microcatheter. The aspiration is better to get the anastasis area. So if you put the coil, maybe less than ten seconds. Yes, and the more conf uh, so con uh, so confirm con uh, so more confident. Yeah, I I I agree with you. Maybe this case is relatively so uh, old old, age, old uh, case so that. Now, nowadays, I will put off course call, call. Thank and, you. And also, the one recommendation is uh, his technique is very nice. But uh, if you make it the perforation, in the coronary perforation, you sh always you had better consider the, uh, put the another puncture the another side, because is uh, this his technique is not perfect. Sometimes we need the uh, uh, cover the stand. Mm -hmm. the, in those cases, the two guiding systems is better to uh, deploy the cover the stand more easily. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, totally, I agree. Okay, great, great. Very nice case, the Shoujo, and thank you. Thank you very much. So we move to the last topic is uh, uh, the Professor Yunggang and the guiding extension castle and the strong support from the parent-child uh, relationship. Yeah, thank you for your uh, the introduction. I'm Dr. Yunggang from Asa Medical Center. I will talk about the guiding extension catheter, a strong support from the parent-child, daughter-child, at the mother-daughter uh, relationship. What is needed for complex PCI? 
strong and calm mind, hemodynamic stability, and strong guide cast a bag of balls. I will use other things we discussed the whole day. I will talk about the strong guide cut at the back up. The guide should be coaxial, and larger size would be stronger, and stronger uh, shape like amplage EBUXB, or the long introduced femoral sheets we can use, and sometimes you can use the deep intubation uh, with, or anchoring technique. Deep intubation, you can use the jerking right with the, the clockwise rotation like this, or the jerking left like this. Uh, this eagle uh, eye-like shape, but sometimes it makes some proximal vessel damage. So uh, the Japanese genius, genius uh, invented the first generation of the mother and child catheter heart rail. With, however, it was a little bit cumbersome in the first version, and it required the limber and reconnect the hemostatic valve. And second generation is more simple with the mother and child catheter. We have the three versions in Korea, telescope, a more deliverable, and guide liner, some more flexible, and guide too with a more push pushable power. And the clinical indication of the guide extension catheter is the presence of the vessel angulation, severe calcification, CTO, anomalous origin. Whenever you need it, you can use. And I will show you some cases that I have used the guide extension catheter. And when we use the, uh, in, when you intubate the guide extension catheter, the most uh, safe way is that to use the balloon guidance. Or uh, if you just push the guide extension catheter, it can make uh, proximal damage and uh, sometimes dissection. So insert the balloon and anchor and follow with the balloon deflation is the most safest way. This is the how I engage it. The, guiding catheter to the distal RCA. And in the such kind of the tortures, the calcified circumflex we can use because the guiding backup is, this is a jerking with the radial uh, approach. So guiding backup was a poor with, because of the axiality. So we can uh, the, use the guide, uh, guide extension catheter to cross the angle to this circumflex. And then guide, we can get the strong backup force. And then put the stand like this. And in case of the calcium nodule in RCA, this is a, a very severe example of the calcification. And the wiring was done because of the very severe calcification and poor back of force. I used the AR17 French and guide Zilla and Corsair and field the XTR, we could across the region. And the balloon was done with one, two at the high pressure on the guide Zilla back up. And could evaluate the post balloon IVOS that showed diffuse multiple heavy calcified nodule and underwent low tabulation with 1.5 millimeter bar because I used a little bit larger bar. So I, uh, in this time, I removed the guidezilla and inserted 1.5 millimeter bar and post low tabulation, inserted the guidezilla again and applied high pressure balloon and DES. And at this time, if the guidezilla cross the region, do not remove uh, after uh, till the end of the procedure, and please uh, be hurry because there is some hemodynamic stability can happen. And after high pressure balloon and final angiography, there is a still lumen limitation, but we could get an acceptable result. And low tabulation via guide extension catheter is uh, possible. It's not easy, and sometimes we have very big resistance, but uh, this is an example of the far distal PLC, uh, uh, the stenosis with the distal RCA CTO, but after uh, stenting even RC, proxy RCA, but distal uh, vessel could not pass the microcatheter. So low tabulation was done, and with the on zoom and the, uh, the visualization of the proximal, we, I, very cautiously uh, the, cross the region with a 1.25 small bar, and then could deliver the rotor bar to the distal. And after the rotabulation, we could uh, treat the distal region. There was a little small population here, but uh, soon closed. And even for this very tortuous RCA, uh, we can approach the region with a the guide gel like this. But in this case, as you can see, the severe, the accordion effect happens, so you should be hurry. And in case of the osteal disease, hard to engage, especially at the RCA osteal disease. And this is jerking catheter, and I just fly the, the floated wire into the RCA, and then could use the guide, guide, guide extension catheter to open the osteum, 
and then could put the stand in this manner. This is another example of the anomalous origin RCA. Usually the a procedure is very difficult. In this case, usually I use the unplugged Kalin catheter, but in this case, it was not very good. So with a jerkin and wiring with a floating wire, and then inserted the guide extension catheter, and the procedure was very stable after that. And also, you can use the anomalous origin left main, because the left main was from the RCA. The left main was very long and the very difficult to cross, so I inserted the guide extension catheter to, sorry, left main shaft, and then could put, put, uh, pro, perform the procedure. Also, it is very effective for the selective angiography. In the uh, case, especially case with the very uh, patient with the high uh, creatinine, the uh, poor renal function, we can select the vessel, and you can use a very small amount of contrast to, to check the NGO. And also for the OCT imaging in some cases, this is the Octavius trial case that I used the OCT or randomized, but uh, you can see that the, this uh, vessel is very far distal circumflex with dominant circumflex, and the imaging is very poor because the contrast is going everywhere. So I engaged the uh, guide extension catheter and could get a good image of the OCT with a very minimal amount of the contrast. And the interesting thing is that at the proximal, you can see that outside of the guide extension catheter with OCT imaging, especially with uh, some guide liner, uh, with our metal uh, strut, uh, you can see clearly vi visualize the outside of the guide extension catheter. So for some case of the left main OCTR imaging, it is useful. And there can be some complications during the use of the guide extension catheter. Stand deformation or damage of the catheters, coronary dissection, pressure damping, air embolism, and dislodgement of the distal marker can happen. And the most Im uh, important complication is the deformity of the catheters. When you feel resistance, because the lumen is small and there are many catheters and wires and they can make some kinking, so when you feel resistance, it, you should not push. It can make severe damage and then can make the harm the patient. And always, uh, usually it happens when we uh, uh, the cross the, the entry port, that the connection point between the, uh, the, the guide catheter and the line. There, in guide gela, there is the metal color that makes some uh, the, the kinking at that point. So you should check fluoroscopy when you have some resistance or there's very tortuous artery to cross the uh, check entry point. And also, no forceful injection when the guide gela is in. The, it can make some this kind of uh, situation. Also, when the guide is very deep, inflate, deep intubated, if you inject forcefully, it can make vessel dissection. So gentle uh, the injection to your assistant, uh, you always need. And also, always take care of the pressure monitoring. If you do the deep intubation, the pressure is damped. So you can uh, find the uh, damping pressure, so you cannot monitor the pressure adequately. So you all, all should check the patient condition, and if the damping pressure happens and as the EK changes, and you should uh, disengage the guide uh, extension catheter. So in summary, strong bag of force is needed for calcified tortuous region complex PCI, and guide extension catheter can overcome limitations of the poor guide support and enable procedures otherwise not possible. And gentle manipulation with hemodynamic monitoring is crucial for the safe and successful procedure. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice lecture. We have uh, the final and uh, Q&A interactive discussion time. Any, any question or comment from the... Uh, thank you for great lecture. Uh, we usually, I usually uh, use the uh, guide extension catheter in complex PCI because the very useful device. However, uh, when we nowadays we usually the ready approach PCI. So we when uh, I op sometimes I pass the IV catheter is very strong for me through guide extension catheter. Do we have any tip for the passing the IV or OCT catheter in ready approach? 
Yeah, I totally agree with your uh, experience. I um, experienced the exactly the same thing, with a, uh, especially with the right uh, radial approach. There is some anger in the, the sub, uh, uh, subclavian and brachiocephalic trunk, and that anger makes some uh, difficulty in the, the using the IVUS because the IVUS character is weak, and there is some some kinking of the wires and guiding uh, guiding center catheters, and some at that at times. Uh, the pushing the is uh, why uh, IVUS catheter can make some the bending and kinking of the wire, uh, the IVUS. So, uh, if it is feasible, and then pull out the guide extension catheter and some uh, uh, the rotate a little bit and insert again, that will help. And if the guide extension catheter is already in, and actually I give up the IVUS evaluation, I just uh, proceed the ballooning and stenting, and after the uh, finishing the the hard uh, the hard job and then check the final result with divers and uh, it it happens uh, frequently. So I think it's very uh, educational, yeah, message. Yeah. So one one question is that there is a three types of uh, guide extension catheter. Is there any preference to use in any specific region? I think that it would be the, the personal preference, I think. Uh, there's no big difference. Uh, but uh, in data basis, system, um, the guide Gila has some more pusher power because of the metal uh, slate and other things have more flexibility, so you can choose the, the guide extension as you want. There are also varying sizes of extension guiding catheter, 5.5, 6 French, 7 French. Which one do you use? Uh, usually, the, I use the uh, catheter uh, by the guiding catheter size. If I am using the 7 French guiding, I select the 7 French, the, the guiding extension catheter. Yeah. Because of the bigger would be better if the, it can pass. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Any question? Okay, so, and the very nice uh, lecture, so we're gonna move to the, uh, this session. I think this is uh, today's last session, and uh, 15 minutes later, we will have uh, some joint nurse and technician session. Tomorrow, we will start at uh, uh, 9 a.m. We prepare the very, very complex uh, uh, left main bifurcation and CTO, cash fight, ISL, diverse case, uh, approximately 20 case, and uh, Tomorrow, much, much interesting, much, much challenging is the best uh, opportunity to learn the, everything about the complex PCI. The, thank you, all the audience, and the joining today's session. And I hope that everyone really enjoyed the tomorrow a diverse live case demonstration. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.